If you are a fan of the MASH TV series, then this should be a familiar face to you. For the first three seasons of that TV show, actor McLean Stevenson played Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake, a role that brought with it fame and fortune for the actor who had known that he was destined to be in the entertainment industry since he was just a young lad. And although McLean was part of one of the funniest ensemble casts on TV, he managed to stand out, so much so that he won a Golden Globe Award for his work in 1974. During the mid-70s, MASH was arguably one of the most popular shows on television. Like I said, the cast was great, but it was more than just that. The creative team led by Larry Gelbart was top-notch, and the scripts that the actors were being given allowed them to shine, regardless of whether the role in that week's episode was a big one or a small one. Still, after a while, the intoxication of being on a hit TV program started to wear off for Stevenson, who became frustrated that if an episode needed to be trimmed for time, it was usually his stuff because his stories were often in the periphery, while the crux of many of the episodes focused on Hawkeye and Trapper John. McLean also became more than just a little upset about the working conditions that he and his castmates were dealing with on set. For whatever reason, at times it felt like, at least to him, that 20th Century Fox were cutting corners with the show's production budget when they didn't need to. So enter NBC. At the time, the network was a perennial third place finisher, and they were hungry for talent. When they caught word that McLean Stevenson might be willing to leave MASH for greener pastures, the courtship began. McLean was told that when Johnny Carson chose to retire, he would be in the running for that Tonight Show spot. And in the meantime, he could have his very own show, a show where he would be the absolute focus. And well, wouldn't you know it, all that stuff sounded pretty darn good to McLean. So he told the folks at MASH that he wanted out. In retrospect, it's easy to say that it was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad decision. But at the time, it looked like a risk well worth taking. And so, at the end of the third season, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake headed home. Of course, we all know that Stevenson's character didn't make it home. The plane was shot down somewhere over the Sea of Japan. And when the writers added that last minute addition to the script, well, they cemented the fact with absolute certainty that McLean Stevenson would never again return to the MASH set. At first, things seemed to be going swimmingly for McLean. In fact, whether appearing as a guest or subbing for Johnny, Stevenson always seemed to be at home on The Tonight Show set. Of course, who knew that Carson was nowhere near being ready to retire? It would be well over a decade before Johnny announced plans to leave late night. And during that time, McLean Stevenson had a string of failed television shows. The first one, The McLean Stevenson Show, was definitely the worst of the bunch. I only vaguely recall this one when it originally aired on primetime, but thanks to the wonderful all-knowing media tool that is YouTube, one can see for him or herself what a mess this thing was. Now, Hello Larry was another story, at least for me. It was a spin-off of different strokes, and truthfully, I kind of liked it. I actually thought the cast, including Kim Richards, was pretty good, and I felt like this show, if it had been given more time and trusted more by the network, well, it could have been a hit. But it wasn't. And at some point, yeah, we can all see this one coming. All of the Monday morning quarterbacks started weighing in on Stevenson's choice to leave MASH. One critic quipped that McLean Stevenson was routinely the annual winner of the I'm Gonna Quit This Show and Become a Big Star Award, while other critics were even less kind by saying things like, He's blown it in Hollywood and now he's worn out his welcome for good. Talk about piling on. But you know, sadly it's human nature to just keep kicking when someone's down. The reality is that none of the cast members that left MASH ever found another show that had the same level of success. Wayne Rogers? Nope. Larry Linville? Uh-uh. And Gary Berghoff? No way, Jose. Those roles and the show itself was so iconic that it just became impossible for the actors to step away from the characters that had made them household names. So end of the day, was it really a horrible decision on McLean's part? I would argue that it wasn't. Why? Well, because he wasn't happy. And to quote the Dalai Lama, the very purpose of our lives is to be happy. If we're not, we need to make a change. And that's exactly what McLean Stevenson did. 
And even though he never had a hit TV show again, and he wasn't even in the running for The Tonight Show when Carson finally did retire, truthfully, McLean always did find work. And while he was the first to admit that the work he found didn't have the same high level of care, craftsmanship, and creativity that he had experienced while working on MASH, still he found joy in many of the things that he did later on. And that, my friends, is why McLean Stevenson made the right decision. Maybe at the wrong time. Perhaps he should have stuck around for a season or two more. But nonetheless, it was the right decision for him. One little interesting bit of trivia, when McLean Stevenson passed away in 1996, it was just one day before actor Roger Bowen died from a similar heart attack. Who is Roger Bowen? Well, he's the actor who portrayed Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake in the 1970 movie version of MASH. So that's it. What do you think? Did McLean make the right decision? Or was it, as many say, a truly terrible, horrible, no good, very bad decision? Let me know in the comment section, and while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.